what do we All right, we next? got some wines from Arizona. Now, we have quite a lineup here. Really? We got four different reds. Okay. Uh, I am familiar with those. Arizona, of course, John McCain's home state. And again, regional wines. A lot of people don't think of Arizona as being a wine-producing place, but here's the deal. And it was fun because we had a customer at the bar tonight that I was showing her on the Google map, like, what the terrain looks like. I mean, high elevation, 4,000, 5,000 feet above sea level. This is a lot like Argentina. Argentina is a high desert. Arizona right. exactly. has areas of high desert. So they have the, the the right conditions to make wine. It just takes some investment. And there's some great investment going on. Yeah. Um, What's the climax in there? What's the temperature like? Well, it's more, it's certainly a desert. It's 90, just 100 high degrees. Like 100 degrees. It's hot in the summer, certainly. Mm. But it does cool down in some of these parts uh, a they bit they at night. Good, good wines when the temperature is like that. that hot? Well, what do you think? Let's see what you let's think. Let's try it. Let's see. All right. What so let's do let's do this one first. This is one of our most popular wines here at Oya. Dos Cabezas yes. DC Red. Yes. The DC stands for Dos Cabezas. It does not stand for District District of Columbia, but we sometimes like to think that it does. Now this is a really cool wine. The winemaker's name is Todd Bostock. He's uh. He's a really cool guy that uh, was I think he was trying to make an, an Italian style red. And this is a light bodied red. It's a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon and Sangiovese. Wow. Um, it's really, really earthy. Wow. Uh, I know, you smell it and. Hey, this is like Portobello mushrooms. It's, yeah. It's like, <laughs> wow, I have this a glass like, of mushrooms. Wow, this is so earthy. Eh. This wine is so good. It's smoky raspberry, what too. What makes it so smoky? Um, the oak that he uses. Really? Um, I actually visited his winery. I mean, you want to talk about, like, garagiste wineries. I mean, he has the smallest facility I've ever seen uh, for a winery. And it is a garage. Oh, really? I mean, okay. well, a lot of wineries have these big sheds, you of know. Of course. Yeah, but this is really tiny. He made, like, 300 cases of this. And he's just a really, really good guy. I am so Love happy we were able to have this at Hoya. Um, mm. we sell this We've sold... Well. We sold We've so sold many. like 114 bottles of this Absolutely. since June. I mean, that Absolutely. doesn't sound like a lot of bottles, but considering but that, you know, dollars production. Well, 100 and, many? 114 bottles. It's like, eh, I mean, it's like 10 cases, yeah, almost a little, a little Cheers. under. I think like yeah, it. 10 cases. Lovely. That's a lot of wine, considering you know you were in Washington and we're selling a wine from Arizona at 10 cases since June. Um, all right, let's do this other one. This is like one of my new favorites. We just got this in. This one is from Arizona also. And this one's a really cool project. This is the Arizona Stronghold Vineyard Mangus, M-A-N-G-U-S. It's a blend of Sangiovese, Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, Merlot, and Cab Pfeffer, which is a, a grape that I'm not familiar with, and Petite Syrah. Now, the cool story about this is that the winemaker... His name is Eric Glomsky, and his co-partner on this, his name is Maynard James Keenan. And those of you that maybe know Maynard James Keenan, he's the front man for the group Tool, um, the rock group. So he's in Arizona now, and he's making wine. So I picked this up um, earlier this week. We got this sent in because I was looking to do some of their wines. And let me tell you, it is... This, it is a this really. This wine is really, really, really good. I definitely recommend this wine with some lamb. Probably some um, lighter, lighter meats, lighter certainly meats. like lamb. But it's smell it. I mean, it's a really juicy. You know, I just don't think this this kind of a wine would hold up to beef. But no, I mean, I it's really it juicy. More like a lamb. Mm. It's juicy. It's lots of red fruits, cherries. It's a little floral. It's nice. Now, a customer earlier did not like it. She thought it was thin and bitter, but it does have a lot of acidity. And if you think about, if they're trying to go for a, like an Italian style blend, because Sangiovese it's is the more great masculine type of wine. No, I think it's a very feminine wine. Really? I'll smell it. No, just smell it. Smell it, taste it. I've been around females all my life, and I will definitely tell you that a male will think this is full body. I think it's a medium body. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, but... Uh, That's what makes it so unique about us wine, because you can get different tastes. Everybody has lot. a little bit of an, a different interpretation of it. But and I definitely would think this would go very well with the lamb. Yes. 
Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I actually Probably. had it with the lamb shank tonight, oh, and it oh, yeah. was nice. Yeah. Now I had this. I had a couple of these other wines too, and this this other Syrah that we'll taste. But let's let's do this wine. Now I have another wine from Arizona that is worth uh, showing you. Uh, Rancho Rosso Grenache from uh, Sonoida, which is also in. Oh, I didn't tell you where in Arizona. These all of these are from down near Tucson, so southeastern Arizona. It's about 5,000 feet above sea level. Um, I had the opportunity to go down there and visit some of the wineries and just was blown away. So I went to Rancho Rosso. Um, this is a good wine. Um, although I will tell you that earlier when I opened this bottle, it had a little bit of volatile acidity on it and it smelled like nail polish remover. Really? Yeah, it's still there. A brand new Never bottle? mind. Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to taste this one. Do you smell it? Yeah, I do. How so? No, but it smells like nail polish remover. Rancho Rosa. Well, let's it's not the- advertise it too much. <laughs> I mean, it's a good wine, but I don't know that there perhaps is something wrong with this. And it's very cloudy, too. Um, I did not get this at the vineyard. I bought it at a wine shop. It's possible that it was a little heat damaged because it does smell a little caramelized. All right, let's move on. Yes. Let's go on because this next one is really killer. The last one we have for you today, Keeling Schaefer Vineyards Syrah, which is also from Arizona, Cochise County, which again is uh, out down toward the Tucson part of the state. And this is Syrah, and this thing to me is like fresh brewed coffee. Fresh brewed coffee. Fresh brewed coffee. I mean, you smell this sucker, and it is screaming. Oh, man. Look at this thing. And this is a, you know, a pretty full-bodied wine. And I think this is a fairly new winery. Let's see if it says much on the bottom. Yeah. Only 326 cases produced. I don't know much about this winery because it is so so new to me. But um, Keeling Shaper Syrah, it's incredible. I get a little bit of leather, too. Mm. It reminds me of a plum. It's got a lot of plum. Do you get the spice? I get a little spice on it. Cinnamon. Yeah, cinnamon, cinnamon, vanilla, like vanilla spice. But I tell, it definitely reminds me of a plum. As soon as you get that plum pill and get the skin off, you definitely can taste that. I just want to smell but it. <laughs> I just want to smell it, man. It is. <laughs> I, and you know what? what's cool about this? I think yeah, the Wall Street Journal just did a taste off of Arizona versus Illinois, too. And I think that the Keeling Schaefer was one of the wines that was in that. And I believe it did very well. Um... I'll post a link up for that on my blog so that those of you that are interested in, in other wines from Illinois and other wines from Arizona uh, have a chance to, to see what, what else is out there because it was a really interesting taste off um, that the wine writers from the journal did. A lot of fun on the label. I like that. Bottle. It's a fun. yeah, very classic looking very classic label. Looking it looks label. like a you know, uh, what is that? like a waiter uh, it's like a server yeah. serving a bottle of wine. Yeah. But it's like a painting. I like it. Yeah, it's absolutely. cool. You know but I do, I love this, I love this Arizona Stronghold uh, label. Look at that. I mean, it's simple, it might look cheesy to you, but uh, it's cool. By the way, this is exclusive to Whole Foods in California, Arizona, and Nevada, if I'm not mistaken. I might be wrong about the Nevada, but they are, they are bringing this, hopefully, nationwide, this Arizona Stronghold brand. They have a great white, too, which I need to get the white. How did you get so many exclusive wines in Oya? How are you able to manage to get so many wines from directly from the seller to our company for Oya Restaurant Lounge? Taste, taste, taste. Travel, taste, travel, taste, travel, taste. travel. Really? Okay. Cheers to that. That's right. Cheers. All right. So there's a little bit of a politically charged wine roundup, uh, regional wine roundup for you. Um, of course, if you have any questions, you know where to find me at Andrew at OyaDC.com or Andrew at CheapWino.com.